God's word this morning, Mark chapter 16. Mark chapter 16. <laughs> Work that. Good news in a jacked up situation. Let me ask you a question. We ain't gonna be long. How many have found yourself disgusted and exasperated by all the chaos, the confusion, and the insanity that's going on in the world right now? Amen. How many of us really sometimes even hate to turn on the television because of all the negative stuff that we're gonna see on the television? Am I right? How many of us sometimes we hate to scroll through Facebook or Instagram because we know we're going to be met with some bad news. It seems like every day you and I, the human race, are struggling trying to figure out is it going to get worse or is it going to get better. But the truth of the matter is as we step back and look at the things in retrospect, it looks like things are going from bad to worse. I now understand what Rodney meant. When he raised the question in 1992, can we all just get along? <laughs> Unfortunately, the question has yet to be answered. There's so much negative news going on that sometimes you just want to shut yourself off from the world and be in your own little bubble. Because I wonder if there's anybody that says, no, I can't take no more negative tin right now. Yes. Suicide rate. Going up. Somebody say jacked up. Yeah. Homicide cases going up, jacked up. Yeah. Exploitation of our innocent little 
children jacked up. Innocent men being executed for crimes they did not commit. Jacked up. Jacked up. War and mass genocide. I don't know if we really, really paying attention. But these places are killing people by the thousands. Yes. And if you don't know, you better know. And get yourself prepared. Yes. Yes. It's been confirmed that uh, Russia and China has missiles close to the United States. Yes. Yes. But while we in here giving God praise, ain't worried about what's going on south of yes. News on the media outlets. Somebody say distraction. distraction. Have you noticed how they're trying to distract you? Amen. From what's most important right now? Yes. Have you noticed that they're throwing everything on the media so that they can get a little sound bite or a little clickbait to get your mind off of what's really important? Because yes. what's really important is November. Yes. Not a thousand bottles of baby oil. Come talk to me now. Yes. That, that's what's really important. What's really important is making sure that you're registered to vote to make sure that we don't get an insane maniac back into the White House and destroy what our ancestors have worked so hard for. That's what's really important. But no, what they want you to be worried about is all said and Cardi B. Yeah. <laughs> my, my. Like their relationship got something to do with you anyway. You know what I'm saying? You're not even on their radar. But that's what they want on your mind instead of the, the what really The lifeline of the African American community is on the line. Again, if you don't trust me, there's a document. <laughs> you know the document. If you peruse through the document, you see how they're trying to turn back the hands of time. Somebody said, Jacked up. I wonder how many of you said out loud, if not out loud to yourself, I, I, I sure would be nice to hear some good news for a change. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know we like good news. Ain't that right? Yeah. I don't know about you. I love good news. I love when I can take the car to the mechanic and he says it's going to be about three or 4000 but he come back and say, nah, bro, it's only going to be 500 You know what I'm saying? That's some good news. Anybody, anybody know what I'm talking about? You know, you get that letter in the mail saying they give you $100 extra on your Social Security. That's some good news. You come on now. You get some good news saying we got a bonus on the way. Everybody got a little green. Come on. We like the good news. We, we like the good news when the doctors come back in and say, you know what? What we thought we saw, we don't see anymore. We don't even have to operate anymore. Everybody likes good news. I like to hear that good news around the end of January, February, when the tank preparer says, sir, I got some good news. You don't have to pay any taxes this year. As a matter of fact, you're going to get a refund. Everybody like Some good news. Everybody like that word F-R-E-E. -E. Come on, talk to me here. Let's admit it. Everybody in this room under the sound of my voice, we all like some good news. Well, I said all of that to say this, that, uh, that I want to do today, I, I didn't come here to preach a sermon of condemnation. I didn't come here to preach a sermon that you got to get right and go to hell because you already know that. But I came with some good news. You won't hear this news on CNN. You you won't hear this news on MSNBC or even Fox News. You, you have to tune in to a different network. All right. You, 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 you got to, you, this news that I'm talking about today, uh, Pop Green, you, you, you got to turn on the channel Spirit and Truth. Yeah. All right. And, and you, you know, and, and, and you got to listen to the, that broadcasting from Heaven's Kingdom Network. I came with some good news. Yeah. Jesus said, Jesus said in our text today, and I'm going to get you out. Jesus said that our responsibility as his followers is to preach the gospel. Somebody say gospel. Somebody else say good news. That's what they are. The gospel is the good news. The good news is that it don't matter where you are, God can find you. The good news is it don't matter what you did, he can cleanse you. The good news is it don't matter how low you are, he can still pick you up. Tell your neighbor, I got some good news. I got some good news. I got some good news. It doesn't matter what 
your title or your position may be. Just the fact that you are a child of God and has been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb qualifies you to be a newscaster to spread God's gospel. I wonder if there's anybody in here that got some good news on the inside of you that you can't wait to share. As a matter of fact, let me give you your free one today. I need you to love your neighbor say, neighbor, I got some good news. I got some good news. What is the good news? God is able. That was the wrong neighbor. That wasn't the news they needed to hear. Turn to the other neighbor. Say, neighbor, I got some good news. I got some good news. Whatever you're going through, my news for you today is that God is able. The scripture reminds us that they overcame the world by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. Uh, I know it may not seem significant or vital or important to you, and I know you may think that your life is small and possibly insignificant, but I want you to know that God has put a word on the inside of you. God has given you a story and a voice. And can I tell you, your story matters and your voice matters, and somebody needs to hear some good news. Somebody needs to hear your testimony. Somebody needs to hear the good news that if God did it for me. Listen, sometimes we don't really think about that thing. But listen, we done been in some sticky situations. We done been in some dark places. We done been in between some rocks and some hard places. And we know it was nobody but God that brought us out. And there's somebody that's connected to you right now that needs to hear some good news from you that says, God has put a word on the inside of you and that word has the ability to change somebody else's life around you. I need to tell your neighbor, tell your neighbor, I'm an atmosphere changer. I'm an atmosphere changer. When you walk into the room, the atmosphere ought to change because there ought to be something good about you. When you walk into the room, something right. yes, shift. Sir. Yes, and not only does the atmosphere shift, but you ought to be able to speak with a father to Mercy, Lord, 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 help me, help me, help me. Y'all, I feel good this morning. Y'all help me. Uh, somebody needs to know yeah. that, 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 that when you connected with God, yeah, that part. And God connected with you, yes. He exchanged His DNA in you. And because He has power, you have power. And when you learn how to activate that power through faith, you should be able to speak with authority and tell some people some good news. You speak with power and speak into somebody else's life. Listen, for this next season of your life, somebody needs to shift their prayer to, Lord, send me some good news, Lord. Is there anybody in the room that say, Lord, I need some good news. I need some good news on my job. I need some good news for my family. I need some good news for my health. I need some good news. Keep all that negative mess, Lord. But I some good news in this season. I'm tired of struggling, tired of crying, tired of worrying, tired of pacing the floor. Send me some good news. Yeah. Not only must you shift your prayer and say, Lord, send me some good news, but you ought to say, Lord, send me, send me some people that I can connect with. Send me some right sources that I can connect with. Attach me to the right voices that will speak good news over me. Can I tell you a part of our problem is we got the wrong people speaking over us. Oh, you might as well go home and say amen. We got folk who don't even have a connection with God trying to speak over our baby. Shut your mouth. Until you get a relationship with God, until you know how to walk in his power, I don't need you speaking a word over me. But Lord, send me some people in this next season who can see where I'm trying to go, who can see where I'm trying to build, and they're not going to try to tear me down, but they're going to speak some good news over me. Lord have mercy. Somebody throw your head back and say, Lord, speak over me. Speak over me. As a matter of fact, let me take a moment and speak over you. You be blessed, my brother. Be blessed, my sister. I want you to be blessed wherever you go. Let me encourage you. Let me speak life to you. Can I tell you, you can depend on God to see you through. Let me speak over you one more time. You might be hurting. Anybody hurting today? You might be crying. You might be worrying and frustrated too. But let me encourage 
encourage you. Let me speak life over you. You can depend on God to see you through. I got one more. I see you in the future. Yes, I do. You look better in the future. I see you walking in favor and prosperity. Let me encourage you, Lord, have mercy. Let me speak life over you. You can depend on God to see you through. I need you to wave your hand down your aisle and say, I'm speaking blessings over you. I'm speaking deliverance over you. You can depend on God. I need some good news. We're slowly approaching one of my favorite seasons, which is Christmas. One of my favorite Christmas carols is, go tell it on the mountain. Over the hills, and everywhere, go tell it. Remember, we sing this song at Christmas time, and it means for us to literally go tell everybody, but what's the message that we got to tell? That Jesus Christ is born. That means we got to proclaim the gospel. Somebody say good news. Well, what, what, what is the good news? And that the good news is that Jesus was born. What, 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 is, what's that? what do you mean, Reverend, he was born? He was just another baby. Well, maybe to you, but, 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 but he's the son of God. Yes. He was born of a virgin. He, he lived a perfect, sinless life, and he died on the cross to take our sins away, and he died on the cross to help us with the stuff we struggle to get right. And in order for us, in order to save us, and in order to deliver us out of our mess and our mistakes, he had to be born. Tell your neighbor, he born, he born, he born, he born, yeah, yeah. He was born, John 3, 16 and 17 says, uh, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Verse 17 says, For God sent his son not into the world to condemn the world. Jesus. But we condemn people every time they don't look like us. <laughs> if he didn't come to condemn oh, it's out now you better say it some of us living in a glass house uh oh uh oh oh lord y'all know <laughs> okay he says he, he didn't come to where to condemn but that through the world might be saved Tell your neighbor there is an exit. There is an exit. Well, why is it good news that Jesus came and died on the cross? Uh, what does that have to do with me? Because from the outside looking in, that sounds and looks like a jacked up situation to me. Yes. That God will send his perfect son to die for imperfect people. It sounds a little jacked up to me. How about you? But the answer is simple. It's good news for you and me because he died because he knew that one day we would get caught in some sticky situations. He died because he knew one day we would be hard-headed and not do what he told us to do. He died because he knew that when Adam fell from grace that we were all prone to sin. Yes, we were. And don't you sit up in here like you ain't never sinned because the scripture says in Romans 3 and 23 that we have all short of the glory of God. Yes, we have. Ah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We all have played in a little bit of mud. Uh, yeah, some of us still play in the mud, but it ain't my business. You, uh, but, but Romans 6 and 23 says, for the wages of sin is death. That's what it says. Oh, Jesus. But the gift of God, tell your neighbor, I got a gift. I got, I a, got gift. a gift. But the gift of God is eternal yes, life through Jesus Christ. What does that mean when God you. It doesn't matter what happens. You got a gift. When God is connected with you, it doesn't matter what's in your face. You have a gift. And you, what is the gift? I got eternal life. And I want to say anybody in the room that says I'm working to see God again. I'm living to see him for myself. It's a jacked up situation that we'll always be prone to sin. The jack of situations that we will always find ourselves having to make some difficult decisions. That can lead to sin. Paul said it best. He said, when I would do good. Uh, evil. Everybody like evil. Paul in the room. Evil. Lord, I'm trying to do good. 
I'm trying to do it the right way. As soon as I try to do it the right way, here comes that slew footed, snap my tooth. Every time I try to live right, Lord, he come. Tall, dark, smelling like Gucci. Lord, every time I try, here she come. Built. What the Commodore say? The brick house. She looking good, and I'm trying to do right. And every time I try to do right, you know what I'm saying? Oh, but how many know that God gives us a way out? He said, the way to the sin is death, but I got a gift. I got a gift. I got a gift. If you choose me, I got a gift. If you lean on me, I got a gift. If you say yes to me, I got a gift. What is that gift? I'm going to give you life. And he picked it up in the Word and said, I'm not just going to give you any kind of life, but I'm going to bless you so much that you have an abundant life. Everything you need, I will provide. Anywhere you need to go, I'll make sure you get there. But you got to be connected. Connected. Yeah. Connected. Tell your neighbor, that's the gospel. That's the good news. I hate to admit it, you know, but I'll be the first one to admit that we have all fallen short of the glory of God. But I'll also be the first one to admit that because God has his hands on us. You don't have to stay down. Lord, ask your Lord, 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 Lord. You don't have to stay down when God's hand is upon you. That's the gospel. That's the good news. Then even though, I'm praying, even though Adam, the first son, disobeyed God, I'm in Genesis 1, he partook of the forbidden fruit. Yes, he did. Because she was built like a... Heartbreaker. <laughs> Money maker. Come on, Pastor. Come on, Messi. Walk the right way. Don't let her smell like Chanel number five. He gonna eat that out. <laughs> Y'all pray for me. Uh, uh, that's what happened. Oh, that mercy. He ate that forbidden fruit. And through his sin, unfortunately, he plunged all of human race into sin. Yeah. He separated us from God because of disobedience. Anybody in the room can, can, can testify you have been disobedient too? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. But aren't you thankful for grace? Yes. Yes. Oh, Anybody glad that when you got your own self in that mess, grace was creeping up around the corner? Anybody else glad that when you got yourself between that rock and that hard place, grace was a lubrication to get you out and wiggle you out of that thing? That's why David said, surely goodness and mercy. I need every bit of that mercy to follow me because I might end up going in the wrong direction, but if mercy is following me to get me right back on track. Yes, yes. That's good news. That's the gospel. But God in his mercy sent us a second act. Whose name is Jesus. And where the first Adam disobeyed God in sin, Jesus, the second Adam, on the other hand, perfectly and completed and obeyed God in everything, even his death on the cross. The first Adam made us all sinners. But the second one made us victorious. But the Jesus, the second Adam, through his perfect obedience, we who were once sinners don't always have to be in that state. Because he died on the cross. Tell your neighbor, that's the gospel. That's the good news. Jesus, the perfect son of God, who never committed sin, died on the cross in our place. So that when it's all said and done, when we return back to the Father, we'll have some place to call home. I got a question. What's, your, what's going to be your forwarding address? Mm, my, my. Mm. Hmm? Wow. If you've ever wondered how much Jesus loves you, all you have to do is take a look at Calvary. My, my. And on the cross where he died. Yes. yes. Where yes. He, he, he died, he suffered, yes. he, he went through pain. Somebody take a neighbor, he did that for me. I really want you to think that. He did that 
for you. He hung there. He could, the Bible says he could have called a band of angels to come lift him off the cross. But he never said a word. My God. He did it Thank for me. you. Tell you nothing, they say it was for me. It was for me. It's for me. 2 Corinthians 5 21 says, For he hath made him to be sin for us, for he knew no sin. But he did it so that we could have a right relationship with God. After Jesus died on the cross, the Bible says he went to hell. He defeated the enemy. He declared victory over the devil. And when Jesus defeated, defeated the devil in hell, he took the keys of death and hell from him. Yeah. Then he rose with all power and he sent his Holy Spirit to be our guide. I got a question. Who's directing you? Oh, my mind. Because if it's his Holy Spirit, mm. that means you were talking to everybody. All right now. <laughs> if it's his Holy Spirit, that's right. That if you're gonna treat people right. That's that if now. If it's his Holy Spirit, if, you're gonna you try to do if. right by him. If come on, if my grandmama would say something, she say, "I done love the Lord too long to let him down." Oh man! Listen, when you love the Lord, you're gonna do everything you can do not to let him down. But, but 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 listen, listen, listen. He went to hell. He got the power back from the enemy, and because he has power, you have power. But the problem is, some of us don't know how to activate our power. I got a question: Why are we still stuck in some of the ruts that we're in? Because we haven't activated our power. Why are we still dealing with some jacked up situations in our lives? Because we have not activated our power. God has given you power. Tell your neighbor, take your power. That's not it. I got some good news. When Jesus went down, before they took him down and before he hung him, the Bible said that he was whipped all night long. The Bible said that he took 39 stripes on his back. And those stripes were not just because the soldiers was mean, but he had to, to fulfill the prophecy. It had to happen. I know it was jacked up, but if he had not took those stripes, you wouldn't have healing today. Is there anybody glad that he got whipped, whipped all night long for you? He took all that just because he loved us. I know sometimes that's hard and unimaginable to think that this man could love you after you done did all that he did. But can I tell you, when you ask him for forgiveness, and when you come to God with a sincere heart and he forgives you, can I tell you, not only does he forgive, but he forgets. And you still holding on to stuff that God don't even remember. I came to let somebody know I got some good news for you today. That if you put your hand in God's hand, God will turn your situation around. I got some good news for somebody today. If you learn how to trust in God, he will open up the way. He'll open up the door. He will give you the direction. He'll give you what you need. Yeah. I saw this movie 
called the forge. You know? mm -hmm. yeah. You hear about that? I wanted to go see Wolverine and uh, 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 my brothers. Yeah, so I, I said, I'll go see Forge next week. So I want you to go see it. It's a beautiful movie. If you have not seen it, I suggest you go see it. Take your sons. Take your nephews. They need to see it. But one of the things that I liked at the end of the movie, they, they, they had a support group only for me. Brothers, we need each other more than what we know, right? But they had a support group. And, but what I loved about it is the leader of the group had so much God in him mm. that he understood the importance of speaking good news. Sometimes, listen, we come into contact with some people every day. Sometimes we want to walk the other way because you know <laughs> ain't nothing good <clears throat> about to come out their mouth. <laughs> Aren't you tired of those kind of people? <laughs> it's always something negative. Always. Here come negative negative. It's always what me, always me. Always pull me out. Yes. Ain't never happened. Never. Mm. Never. Mr. Clean White, y'all may not know him, gospel artist, he wrote the song, Except What God Allows. Told God as he was praying, he said, God, you took some good people from me. You should have took the other ones. <laughs> <laughs> some, of us, some of us got some other ones we want him to take. Because <laughs> they always make it. But he did something for me, Brother Al, at the end of that movie that blessed my life. He spoke over them. Praise God. Oh, Jesus. Mm -hmm. I, I, I want, that's, that's the good news I want to give you today. That, 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 that you need to find somebody who can speak over you. Yes. Yes. And not speak any negative news. Yes. But can speak some good news. Yes. You need some people who can see you where you are. Yes. And, but see where God is taking you and speak you to where you need to be. Yes, yes. You need somebody to see you down and they have the ability to speak you back up. Yes, yes. You need to see some people, you need some people in your life that can see you struggling, but they'll speak you to a place called abundance. Yes. You need yes. to attach yourself yes. to some people who have enough Holy Ghost on the inside of them that says, I don't care what it looks like. Give 
Yes. yes. I know everything may not be kosher. I know it might be jacked up. But there's good news in a jacked up situation. The good news is that he lives. Father. Thank you, Father. I speak prophetically over somebody that will receive mm -hmm. that before this year is out. You're going to get the good news that you've been waiting for. Before the year is out. Folk that attach to you, the ones you've been praying for, yes. they're gonna get the good news. Yes. I speak over your life right now that every prayer that you've been praying in this last season of your life, every prayer that lines up with the will of God, yes. he's yes. the good news on it. And it's coming express mail. Listen, he ain't gonna take them long to do what he do, but you got Believe. That's part right there, Pastor. That part right there. You gotta have connection. Yes. Yes. You gotta. You gotta be connected. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. That's how you get it. Mm hmm To the right source. You gotta be. Connected. Yes. I speak prophetically right now. Good news is coming to your address. Good news is coming to your job. You're getting ready to get a, a promotion that you didn't even ask for. God's getting ready to give you a bonus money out of nowhere. And it's going to hit right on time. I said good news. Over you right now. I speak under the mouth. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Next time you go to the doctor, he's gonna have to scratch or he she's gonna have to scratch their head trying to figure out what in the world happened. What we saw last bit that we don't see, you know why? Because God is getting ready to send you some good news. I hear God saying, I'm getting ready to stir my hand in some paperwork for somebody. There's some paperwork you need God to speed up on your behalf. I speak good news, right? gotta be. There's a prerequisite. There's a prerequisite. The scripture today says those that believe. He said those that believe. The only thing you have to do is believe. What do you need to believe? A mind that works. Yes. Have you seen God do stuff for you before? Yes. Yes. Have you seen God do it for somebody else? Yes. Well, why can't you believe him to do it for you? Yes. You know why? Your connection's weak. Yes. When your connection's where it needs to be, you can stand flat-footed, yes. ten toes down. Yes. And say whatever yes. it is. Yes. God's gonna do. You know. Yes. Y'all know what amen means, right? Mm -hmm. So be it. Amen says, so let it be. 
when you're connected with God and he has this on you. All right. All right. All right. Scripture says that his promises to us oh, yes, are amen. yes amen. and amen. amen. Which means yes, so let it be. I, got, I came to some good news. I promise we'll get it back to it, but I got some more good news. God's giving that a so let it be right up in your house. All right. God, I need a blessing. You do, so let it be. Let it be. God, I need the turn up. Oh, you do? Yes. So let it be. Yes. How many need a so let it be? Yes. Well, if you need it, you got to be what? Connected. Connected. I'm talking to somebody right now. You need to fix your connection. <laughs> Say that. Say that. You're ready. I feel you. You're tired of where you are. Mm. Tired of dealing with the difficulties of life by yourself. Mm. You don't have to. He says, come unto me. All who are heavy laden. Yes. We heavy. Listen, if you live in 2024, you, we got some heavy stuff. Yes. But he says, learn of me. Because my yoke is easy. My burden is light. He says, you don't have to, as a matter of fact, you didn't have to fight this. Just suit up. Because by the time you and the enemy gets in the ring, I'm going to wear them out so much so that they don't even have the energy to fight you. But the problem is you've been trying to do it on your own. Why? When he says, I stand at the door, you at the house? You here? I see the lights on. Mm. I heard the TV on. Don't mute me like I'm a Jehovah Witness. <laughs> Some of us been muting God. Yes. He pulls up to the door. Ready to walk in. Ready to put some things in order. And we put mute on. Hoping that he'll turn around and go to somebody else's door. And then you turn around and say, but God, I need you. He said, I was at the door. I'm talking to somebody right now. You need to fix your connection. If that's you, I want you to come right now. Don't, don't, don't think about it. Don't look to the left or the right. Don't worry about what nobody else say. Because the same way I had to walk down here. And lay it. Everybody will have to do the same. If you're here, I'm talking to you. I want you to move right now. If you say, Reverend, that word was for me today. I'm dealing with some jacked up stuff. But after this word today, I believe that good news is coming. And what I want to do before I leave this house, I need to drop all the negative news I have. I need to drop it at this altar. If that's you, I want you to come very quickly. We're going to pray, and then we're going to continue moving into our baptism. Amen. I want you to come.